starting. All right, you're on. Okay, so uh, once again, let me say thank you so much for letting me take a few minutes to tell you about myself and my campaign. Uh, as some of you know, uh, I have served in the city, on the city council, Sterling Heights City Council, for the past three plus years. Uh, it's an honor to serve my community, and I look forward to I look forward to continue to do so, just in a different capacity. During my time on the council, we have had several accomplishments that I'm very proud of. Uh, the park system is getting a major overhaul. Many of you that have driven by Dodge Park and Utica Road notice quite a few things happening over there. Uh, I believe that it, the, the, our new park system is going to be transformational for our city. Uh, we have increased curbside recycling at a reduced cost, and we continue to fund our liabil liabilities that will help us continue to thrive into the future. I'm happy that I'm able to be a part of the council, uh, the city council during this special time in Sterling Heights. Uh, but I can no longer sit back and watch the dismantling of our education system and the destruction of our infrastructure or the general overreach by the legislature to limit local control. As a public school teacher and a proud MBA member, I have been witness to moves by, school le uh, by some legislators in Lansing to erode the quality of education in Michigan. Schools are underfunded, teachers are under attack, and students are failing all over the state because of, of a lack of resources. This needs to stop. Education is too important for the success of our students and society as a whole. I just want to mention a, a couple of recent issues that have made me concerned for our kids and the teaching profession. Recently, a study found that it takes $9,500 per pupil to educate them. We spend about $7,500. How can we expect our students to excel if we, re if we refuse to fund our schools? If we choose to continue to shortchange our kids, our economy will suffer, our society will suffer, and the whole future of Michigan will suffer. Governor Snyder just signed a, uh, a law requiring new public school millage money to be shared with, uh, with for-profit charter schools. <laughs> if you're a for-profit charter school and your school is not profitable, then get out of the business. No, do not expect taxpayers to pad your wallets or bail you out. Uh, and in this, in this uh, we are no longer offering pensions to teachers, and this is the whole. And this is, uh, I think, going to be detriment, not attracting the best of the best. And so, I think this is going to. We're going to see that happening in the next ten years, I would say. Uh, and this whole idea of arming teachers is beyond ridiculous, in my opinion. I, for one, will not be carrying a gun in school. I don't want to work in a school where my coworkers are carrying a gun, and I most certainly do not want my kids going to a school where teachers are carrying guns. Armed guards is one thing, but teachers with guns is not the solution to the terrible problem of mass shootings in schools. The infrastructure of Michigan has become so bad that it's become a danger to the well-being of our citizens, and I'm sure many of you have probably experienced a blown tire, a, a, a ruined rim, a broken axle. Uh, but I will give some credit to Governor Snyder. Uh, he understands what is needed to fix the roads, but he couldn't convince the legislature to back his proposal of $1.2 billion a year to fund these. This is what it's going to take to get our roads and bridges in proper order. But we're going to need to have strong Democratic leadership in the House to work with Republicans to find solutions to this problem because it's not going away. I would call on the legislature today to dip into the billion dollar rainy day fund to temporarily fix what we can until a more long-term solution can be achieved. Um, as some of you know, that the legislature did find some money, $160 million, but uh, for Sterling Heights, it's going to only be approximately $800,000, which is, which is basically a drop in the bucket. It's not going to solve the problem. As I close, I kind of want to give you a quick rundown of my credentials with the Democratic Party. Uh, I got involved in my first campaign back in 2004 uh, when a professor of mine out at Oakland University by the name of Paul Kubitschek ran for state rep in Royal Oak. Uh, he was unsuccessful, uh, but we did get Marie down again out of the out of his loss. Uh, in 2010, I can I campaigned for Ken Lampar, where I made something like a thousand phone calls and delivered over a hundred signs. In 2012, I was out knocking doors with Henry Yanez. I knocked doors and secured lawn signs for Candace from Warren Consolidated School Board. I was a precinct precinct delegate for two terms. I'm on the executive board of the Ninth uh, Congressional Dems, a former executive board member of, uh, for the Macomb Dems and a current uh, trustee for uh, the Sterling Heights Dems. Uh, and I also played a role in organizing that, that group back two years ago. And then of course my three campaigns for the city council, which is not partisan. Uh, this seat needs to stay in the hands of Democrats. And so when the primary comes in August, we need to nominate a strong Democratic candidate that understands the issues and has the campaign experience to hold this seat in November. Bring on the blue wave, you can't come at a more critical time in our state and our country. 
Of course, as I end, I'm always, uh, I always have to add that I'm looking for volunteers um, that can go out and make phone calls, knock doors, uh, put up yard signs. Uh, so if any of you are willing to do that, I have my card on, on the table, and please contact me by email or Facebook, and I'd really appreciate it. So uh, that's all I have, and I, once again, I thank you so much for uh, allowing me a few minutes to speak.